as a filmmaker, um, I picked up a camera for the first time when I was about seven, eight years old. And this was at the height of the Titanic boom. So I had this idea in my head of what a film was, where it was um, bombastic, spectacular, and thing always had to sink in the ocean. So I did my first underwater shot with this camera and completely stuffed it. And my parents said, you will never have a camera again as long as we're alive. <laughs> G'day people, here we are, Filmmaker Friday. So, pretty excited, number four, Davo Hardy from Davo Hardy Productions in Brisbane. He's uh, an all-rounder. He's uh, a writer, director, I guess, by heart and by core skill set, I guess you might say, but he's also mucked in on a variety of different productions and is willing to collaborate with other people. And I guess it just has a passion and a love for the art form and arts in general. Um, he's got, you know, some interesting bits and pieces in his backstory that I won't uh, ruin now. I'll wait to actually get a chance to talk to him and then we can go through it uh, then. So, all right, let's uh, let's get him in here. G'day, mate. How G'day, you going? <laughs> Very well, thank you. Thank you. Thanks uh, and apologies for the slight delay here, uh, getting things organised. It's just fun and games, doing uh, everything myself, <laughs> essentially trying to do the artwork, the social media posting. Facebook went and changed a bunch of settings. Uh, they've got some new studio, I think studio, so they're probably trying to ramp up. It looks like everybody's basically trying to do the same thing. Yeah, they, they want to be yeah. the kind of core de streaming destination and location um, and try and lock down the viewers to there. Anyway, so, mate, look, um, for people who don't know who you are, uh, perhaps we can start just by giving us a little bit of a, a rundown on who you are and what you're doing currently. Alrighty, yeah. um, first up, I would probably say that I'm a filmmaker. Um, I have so many different things that I've, I've done and am known for, but that comes into my philosophy that um, one should never have their feet planted in one place for too long and get complacent. It's just forever being curious and exploring bits and pieces that keep the creativity going and keep the curiosity and, and, and the mind ticking over and the questions coming. That leads mm. into bigger stories and broader um things to produce but uh end of the day i'm a writer director of film and uh, a storyteller overall so my uh, outlet for that might she might come and go but that's essentially what i'm always doing yeah yeah awesome so um having been uh, someone who was trying to get into <laughs> video production, filmmaking and the like last year. I kind of was like, I don't know, it must be having a midlife crisis or something. I was just like, that's it. I'm quitting my corporate career and I want to go do something creative. I used to do a lot of creative stuff when I was younger. So I kind of, I never, you know, I had 20 odd years of not really doing anything terribly artistic. So as soon as I started learning a little bit about editing and uh, the art form of movie making and things like that. It's just been a, a nonstop journey of learning from there. And it's as um, I love what you said there in terms of the curiosity, because I think that that, yeah, it drives you and it's, um, it's exciting. I think creativity is such a powerful thing that I think, yeah, probably vastly underrated as, um, you know, a core component of being a human and, and, um, and being happy. So, I mean, as I was saying, it's, it's I know it's a hard road to tread to try and sort of uh, pave your way, and you you're much much further down the path than than I got to. You know, I um I I DP'd on a short film last year that we just produced up here with the Sunshine Coast Screen Collective called Showdown, which hasn't aired. I think it was a, they were trying to maybe get into the festival circuit but of course then covid came so um it's as yet unreleased but that was as close as i've gotten so let's talk about i guess your backstory and um 
yeah, and I mean, how you have how you've kind of gotten to where you are today. Like, I like to wind the clock, you know, right back. D- did you grow up in Queensland, or what's your? Uh, I'm actually from the south coast of New South Wales, um, just beyond Sydney. Um, okay, and I've uh, I've travelled around a lot. Uh, what with uh, getting my films out there. Uh, actually, last year was the first time I actually got to uh, take my film to different states to show it to uh, Q&A audiences, which was um, just a, a, another new step along the way of the journey. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty exciting. Uh, so whereabouts on that south coast? Because I, um, my grandparents used to live down at Jaroa, which is down sort of south of Kaima. So I know that that little stretch reasonably well. I would say I'm officially... A, a gong boy from Wollongong. Um, oh yeah, <laughs> it's it it, it, it it was different back then to how it is now. It was um, I would say it was still kind of in its steelworks coal town mindset then. It's now much more yeah. of a university town. So it's it's yeah. own personality has changed in the twenty five years since I was growing up there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so when did you make the move up here? As soon as I finished high school at age eighteen, I um, there's 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 a, a few things that happened then, but broadly speaking, I got a scholarship to film school in Sydney. So um, I I loved the uh, two hour commute, but I didn't want to have it every day. So um, I had to go w- w- with the calling. And um, one thing I love about uh, Wollongong and the surrounding uh, suburbs is that it's inside of a escarpment of of mountains so yes. you basically have to kind of climb over it to get out and this whole world opened up which i had seen you know in passing on day trips and so on but yeah. to then suddenly wind up in the big city i had that real um cliche moment of um you know craning my neck up to see the tall buildings and like this is actually <laughs> where i live now what a culture yeah. shock <laughs> yes yeah no i know what you're talking about i yeah i mean i grew up i grew up in country new south wales and yeah starting from really teeny like three, four house towns through to, um, you know, Bellingham was probably only about 3,000 people or something. And even though I had relatives in Sydney and a bit like yourself, I'd sort of been through, when you get, when you move there, uh, it's so different. You go from pretty much knowing half the people around the place and, you know, saying hello or just at least saying hello and passing by to uh, nobody kind of will literally give you the time of day. <laughs> if you try and approach somebody, people kind of scurry, they scurry away from you. People are very guarded, yes, um, which is something which I understand and I feel that around people, but I'm also, um, when I ask people just uh, to tell me what they perceive of me, they tend to say confident and uh, first one to start a, uh, a a gathering of people i didn't know that was a skill that i had or a, a trait that i have but um mm. the the evidence itself so those of us who do approach a stranger wanting to engage it isn't always about asking for a dollar or um or um something uh illicit it's just wanting to connect <laughs> Exactly. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah, just just be a human being, you know. Like, just say hello to someone. Say hello to someone at the bar and uh, and what have you. Yeah, no, it's it's funny you like you're saying because uh, I have recognised over the years that I well, I think particularly in my twenties where we were doing a lot of socialising. I didn't have kids and what have you. I definitely was someone who kind of corralled people together. You know, like I could seem to have a bit of a knack for um saying hey let's all do this and da, 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 and just round people up you know um which yeah. i think which probably be quite helpful when it comes to uh being a director you know it's part of i guess part of the the function really isn't it very much so um i suppose i have a rather trustworthy face which is helpful um and uh, once i'm in the 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 groove of directing um I don't discriminate with who I can approach for getting stuff done. It's often just those, those first few steps of getting motivated. But once I'm in that that, that zone, um, I do find it very easy to communicate with people and to uh, get the team moving. And as mm-hmm. you were saying when we first started this um, th- th- this feed, uh, when you're wanting to be um, 
the maker of something and get a production done, it's very difficult to be both the captain and the engineer and 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 be at two places on the um on on the set because uh, de- delegating has been the hardest thing for me over the years. I, I I have a certain vision and to keep that vision it needs to uh, have certain things in place. But then you mm. hand it over to a DP, hand it over to the actors, hand it over to the set designers and so on, and they all have your vision there as something to build upon, but they bring their own flavor to it. And mm. that is always having to manage the broader thing. So that's what makes the career so much fun. <laughs> Brad. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So film school, um, what sort of year was that, that you were there? 2008, 2009. Yeah. That was the international film school of Sydney, wasn't it? Yes. Uh, which has now uh, been bought up and re uh, branded as the Australian film and television theater. Oh, good Lord. Um, AFTT is what it's called. Oh, afters is that? Yeah, AFT. Right, no, okay. Not, no, no, not afters. No, not, not afters. afters. Um, no, there's there's no. another one, and they will. They'll be, they'll be proud that I'm uh, telling them uh, apart from afters. Afters is um, its own entity. Um, yeah. AFTT is this other one, which is half acting school, half film school, and they were okay. uh, two entities which combined about oh god uh, within the last ten years or so. Yeah, yeah. So what was it that drew you to film to begin with and how did you get the scholarship? Oh, wow. Um, I was always a film appreciator when I was uh, quite small. Um, I would have my core group of friends in, 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 the, in the classroom and over recess time we would uh, reenact our, our uh, favourite scenes and stuff and just... Uh, in hindsight, we were almost play acting to ourselves, but I, I'd always really enjoyed that creativity and that um, collaboration. So yeah. I could never articulate that I wanted to be a filmmaker. People would would see this this um, writing streak I had, and uh, I was quite young when I was reading novels and writing a lot. But as a filmmaker, um, I picked up a camera for the first time when I was about seven, eight years old, and this was at the height of the Titanic boom. So I had this idea in my head of what a film was, where it was um, bombastic, spectacular, and thing always had to sink in the ocean. So my first underwater shot with this camera and completely stuffed it. And my parents said, you will never have a camera again as long as we're alive. <laughs> so it took me a few years to get that, um, <laughs> to get that uh, forgiveness from them, but... Um, <laughs> Well, it was a of apology and a lot of um, like understanding that uh, this is quite uh, precious equipment. And um, I, I, don't, I don't know, I think they just saw that it wasn't a passing phase as I, as a curious child has a lot of passing phases. This is the one which I had, which mm-hmm. didn't ever quite go away. So there was a garage sale up the road and I was about 12 years old and they were getting rid of this um, dreadful uh little camera there uh it was running only off ac it went right into the vcr and it only uh showed up in black and white and i thought well this is my punishment so i (laughs) used it on the end of a 300 meter long um, extension cord to take it away from the living room and um that's when i first discovered uh vcr to vcr editing and um that kind of puts the, the era in, in people's minds when the yes. this was. <laughs> yes, it goes back a while. <laughs> uh. <laughs> um, and so then um, when I reached high school, it was uh, English. So I did a high level English, uh, advanced uh, extension one and two. So to to make anything close to a film in high school, either you go the drama route, which is most, mostly uh, theory I'd heard, or you go the English route, which is uh, you read a lot of novels, you watch a lot of films, and then when you reach the HSC, you can actually make your own. So um, that was a bit of like, pre-planning from as far back as like year six to year seven period. But when I finally reached that point, I had this idea in mind. And um, uh, I just took this uh, seven minute short I- I'd made uh, at age 17, 18 to the uh, film school thing I would like to apply for next year. And um, they saw my economic background, they saw my experience, and just said, we're thinking about running a scholarship. Are you interested in that? And I thought, I suppose so. <laughs> um, and the rest is history. 